Hi everyone, welcome. My name is Cassie Ng, and this is Robert Vargas. We're fifth year PhD candidates in the psychology department. We're here to give you a virtual tour of the psychology department and everything our program has to offer. There are three core disciplines in our department, cognitive, developmental, and health slash social. But just because you're in one discipline doesn't mean your research is secluded to that area. For example, my research is with children, so my area of work is considered developmental, but I also use neuroimaging and focus on attentional processes, overlapping heavily with cognitive. And I also implement exercise-based interventions, which is more health-related. If there's one word to describe our department, it would be interdisciplinary. You'll leave here well-rounded with knowledge and skills in many overlapping areas. Even though we don't have a clinical discipline, that doesn't necessarily mean you can't work with clinical populations. For example, my advisor Eric Thiessen collaborates with child psychiatrists at University of Pittsburgh and works with pediatric populations at risk for attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Marcel Just works with populations with autism spectrum disorder and suicidal youth. And Marlene Berman works with patients with epilepsy and prosopagnosia. You'll also notice that our department is relatively small and tight-knit. By the time you graduate, you'll probably know everyone, and they'll know you too. I've seen graduate student cohorts ranging from 3 to 10 people, but the typical size is around 4 to 5. This is good because it fosters more of a cooperative over competitive environment. Let's head into Baker Hall though. This building is where the psychology department is located. Better hurry, it's a little chilly outside. Welcome to Baker Hall. Oh wait, safety first, I need to suit up. Okay, we're good. This is where your office and the majority of classes, lab spaces, faculty, and staff are. You'll see that Baker Hall is unique and that it's a very long building. But I love it because it kind of reminds me of a train station, like platform nine and three quarters from Harry Potter or a really fancy airport. Some spaces are on the bottom floor, some are on the second floor, but majority of the psychology spaces are on the third floor, which is where we're heading. Whoa, watch your step. We could take the elevator, but I'm trying to get my steps in. Today on this tour, I'm going to show you all around Baker Hall, Margaret Morrison, which is a five minute walk from here where the developmental labs are, the University Center right next to Margaret Morrison, which has a lot of resources for graduate students, and the Mellon Institute, a few blocks away where our fMRI facilities are. Oh, uh, ignore the cameraman. Okay, let's head into the graduate student wing where all of our offices are. So this is the grad wing. Look at this, hot and cold water. Mm, luxury. Nice microwave, bunch of offices. Here's a nice little, where are people? <laughs> where are they now? So when you are a second to plus years, you get your own office space. So this is just, a nice little preview of what grad students typically do. So we go to conferences together. So this was at Infancy Conference. This is in Montreal in Canada. Um, we also went to Potter Fest in one of the museums here. There's also the CMBC retreat, which is... Robert, where is it again? Uh, it's typically held at Seven Springs, which is like a ski resort um, outside of Pittsburgh. We also, we go to the club. This is before the club. <laughs> and we also go to bars and breweries. So this was after Kevin Jarbo defended. And we also support some of our students who are actually musicians. So Janine is, ah, uh, there she is. <laughs> Janine is actually in a band. So we all go and support her. And we also have socials. So this is my cohort. Ooh. This is the rest of my cohort. 
and we do fun things like celebrate Halloween together. Again, pre-pandemic, but point is we have a lot of fun. This is my area. You can see it's, you know, de personally decor <laughs> decorated. We have some uh, necessities like paint and um, glitter, coffee machine, whiteboard, and oh, hey Robert, what are you doing there? Hey, just doing some grad school work. <laughs> so the department will actually give you a monitor if you want. And as you can see here, our desk can also be adjusted. So if you want a standing desk, that can also be arranged. We like to sit, so we just have our basic sitting desk. So this is the first year office. This is where you'll be staying and you get to choose your office space and you'll get keys where you can lock up secure things on top of your desk and in your filing cabinets. My favorite part about this space is definitely the blackboard. So this is where you can express yourselves. I honestly don't know where this dinosaur came from, but it has been here since I started grad school. And so yeah, this is just a fun space where you'll get super close with your cohort and you can just come here and do work or just hang out. Hi, grad wing though, let's have a nice cameo from our fourth years. Also, I am so jealous of this office, this couch, mm, you know, so you can just take these little cat naps throughout the day. Um, this must be, I wanna say Patience's desk, writing systems of the world, classic. Hi, we're the fourth year cohort. My name is Patience Stevens. Um, I study the processes behind learning how to read um, using both computational and developmental methods, and I work with David Plout. Um, I'm also in the program for interdisciplinary education research, and I am the coordinator for the graduate outreach program. Hi, I'm Krista Bond. Um, I work with Tim Versteinen, and I study decision making and generalization in decision making. Um, and I like running and coffee and biking and climbing. Hi, I'm Janine. Um, I work with Vicki Helgeson and I look at racial and cultural differences in the link between social support and health. And um, I picked up roller skating. So yeah, these are my yes. roller skates. So fun. Hi, um, Foo or Phoebe, she and or they pronoun series, either is good with me. Um, it's been four years, I still find y'all so cool. Um, holy y'all are so cool. I study causal cognition um, with David Rackison and David Danks. Um, so I look at the processes and representations by which humans learn about causation and what leads us astray. So I work with technically both adults and babies. Um, in my yeah what is free time in my free time i like to read um my most recent favorite is just anything by nk jemison um i will swear by this book and anything that's by her and uh yeah happy to see you all oh uh and yeah if you're a first year there is a high chance that you will come into contact with me and we'll have to bear all of my emails because i help with first year things sometimes yeah, we're all pretty involved in the department. So like Patience said, she's in the uh, outreach program. She coordinates that. Krista is a GSA rep. GSA stands for the Graduate Student Assembly, which is CMU's student-run government, which I'll talk about a little later. I am the gradvocate, and Phoebe is a faculty rep. Excited to <laughs> oh, meet yes. you all. Yeah. Bye. 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 Come. <laughs> So something you'll notice throughout this tour of our department is the artwork hanging around the hallways. This sculpture is something that I actually built in my first year. And these were pieces donated from our IT department. But this lit up brain here and these lights, they were actually ordered by Mike Tarr, our department head. So something that's really important in graduate school is having hobbies, having a really good work-life balance. So for me, that is painting, drawing, and sculpting. And the department is really supportive of that. Throughout this tour, you'll see a lot of 
my artwork that is tied to the science in this department. But it's also just a reminder that work-life balance is really important. And having hobbies and having a life outside of research is so important for mental health. look at another wing in Baker Hall. This is Jessica Cantlin's office. Using fMRI, she looks at the intraparietal sulcus of young children doing numerical tasks. And what she found is that boys and girls actually show identical abilities. Something super badass about Jessica's office is this. She was actually named Times Person of the Year in 2017. This right here, my friends, these are goals. One day, I hope to have my own portrait in my office blown up on the cover of a magazine for making a difference in the world. Let's take a look at another space. This is Brad Mahone's research lab space. Mm, classic whiteboard. Actually, this is genius. I would love to have a whiteboard wall behind my working computer. But Brad's lab studies how object concepts are represented and organized in the human brain. And no, I did not just write that on the chalkboard to remember it. We have some, some nice view of campus from here. It's oh, a nice chair. Um, but yeah, this is a really, this is where his space is. You can see that there's some nice lighting, nice setup. Something really cool about Brad's research is that he actually provided evidence that football injuries, that routine hits, damage the brain. Pause. On the left is the core staff wing. wing, And this is Erin Donahoe's office. Erin is very, very special. She does a lot of things for the graduate students, like organizing visiting weekend, She's also who you email any inquiries about the program, and she's also someone that you can go to and confide in. So I've definitely sat on this couch before, just, you know, venting. This is one of my favorite things, the yoga ball. But you can see here that she has all students' dissertations here, and just another friendly face in the department who you can go to as a resource. I can't cover all of the core psychology staff, but someone who I do want to talk about is Nick Pegg. Nick Pegg is our IT person for the entire department, and he has made a significant difference for the graduate student, for the staff, for the undergraduate students. But Nick will hook you up with your new laptop when you get into the program, but some of you may know that a large part of academia is presentations, which also means printing posters, which is what this gigantic machine is here. Procrastination 101, there has definitely been times where I have been making posters last minute. And the rule on paper is that you need to get Nick your posters 48 hours in advance, which I think is already generous. And there's definitely been times when I have emailed Nick in a panic, being like, Nick, I need a printer posted, like my flight is leaving, and he will have it printed in seconds. What I'd like to emphasize is that he doesn't need to do that, right? He could email me the next day and be like, well, too bad, so sad, printed at the conference venue, but he doesn't. So he really goes out of his way to help the graduate students. He will also make sure, so if you need like SPSS or MATLAB on your computer for your research or any other technological resources, he is the go-to person and he will hook you up. So he is another really important resource in the department and someone who is also very special. Pause. On the right is Marlene Berman's office. This is Marlene Berman, and she was actually the first female faculty member at CMU to be elected into the National Academy of Sciences. These are brain lobectomies that I painted from Marlene Berman's research. These were actually performed on children to end epileptic seizures. I remember my first time sitting in Marlene's office, I noticed that there were these Tupperwares on this desk and what I thought was her lunch were actually real human brains. So you can see that these are slices of both hemispheres and this right here is an actual human brain. How cool is this? Also, oh, well, do not eat. <laughs> 
But yeah, Marlene is amazing. She is one of the faculty that I have reached out to many times, just emailing if I could get her feedback on my research. She is not in my area of research, but she still takes the time to talk and give feedback about my work, which I think is really important and something special. Pause. On the left is 336B, our main conference room, and on the right is the psychology lounge. The psychology lounge is where we have most talks, visiting faculty colloquium speakers, and job talks. Something unique about our program is that we don't have quals. That's right, no qualification exams. Instead, in our first years in the program, we give presentations, also known as brown bags, on our research in front of the department. I know this can sound intimidating, but coming into grad school, I had really bad speech anxiety. I'm talking shaking hands, shaky voice, basically reading from my slides and avoiding the audience. Now, as a more marinated graduate student, I've given 28 oral presentations, at conferences, and invited talks at other universities. Brown bags and giving talks within the department and getting feedback from the faculty and students will strengthen your presentation skills so that when you do present outside of CMU, you'll be more than prepared. You also take a presentation course with two faculty in our department, which will help you prep for brown bags, and you'll also give and receive feedback to your cohort, and will be given a lot of support from the graduate students. This is the Psychology Lounge. This is a nice communal place where we have a fridge and freezer, sink to wash your hands, coffee maker, microwave, toaster oven, and all of our mailboxes. And hell yeah, we recycle. But this is just a nice place where you can hang out, do work, and you can also hold office hours here when you are TA. Okay, so let's take a tour down another part of Baker. This is Vicki Helgeson's office our graduate director who you've already met. Me as well as several graduate students have been to Vicky's office before. She is who you go to if you are having any conflicts or any issues in the program or in life and she will give you the best advice for your professional development and she will look out for your interests. She's also very responsive which I think is important for any graduate director. So if you email her, she will respond to you within the day. Another fun fact about Vicky is that she will ask you what your favorite cookies are and she will take that on as a challenge and she will bake them. She's also very inclusive. So if you are vegan or gluten-free, she will bake them that way, which I think is something special about Vicky. Pause. On the left, we have David Creswell's lab space, which we'll visit in a few minutes, and the psychology reception office, also known as the fishbowl because it's surrounded by glass. Hey, Queen Bee. <laughs> Since we're virtual, I am going to take my mask off. It'll be nice to meet all you folks whenever you might get here. Uh, my name is Becky Finkel, and I am the receptionist and the facilities coordinator in psychology. I provide office supplies to the entire department. Anytime there are facilities issues, you know, the light goes out, your heater's not working, whatever, that would be me, you would call. And I'm also very important for grad students. I do your expense reports. So whenever the grad students spend money, I'm the person to come to to try to get it back. Okay, so just emphasizing how important Becky is. So yes, Becky takes care of all of our reimbursements. So when you travel for conferences, she will get that reimbursement back to you within a few days, which is amazing. Very, very quick turnaround. Also, endless supply of paper and supplies. I would like to just say that this is like Target on crack. Look at all of these <laughs> things. Mm. Pens in every color, Sharpies staples and there's even stamps and postage look at this we will hook you up next to becky's office are our printer and scanner facilities so if you need to mass copy and print consent forms for participants or exams for ta classes these are connected wirelessly to our laptops 
Okay, so we're just gonna take a tour in one of our social labs. Oh, what a surprise. We have a cameo from David Cresswell. Hey everybody, welcome to my lab. This is the 340 wing. Um, we have a number of rooms here where we do a lot of work related to stress and coping and stress management interventions. So oftentimes you'll see people coming from the community end and looking around, kind of wondering where they should go. You, typically they need to go to my lab. So you'll send them down to this wing here. Um, and I just want to say welcome. Um, I know this is unusual to um, have virtual tours, but uh, we're delighted to have you. And certainly, I think by the time you're, you're coming here to start classes, we'll all be back in person. And uh, hopefully you and I can sit right here at the table uh, in the 340 wing and, uh, and have a conversation. But it's a wonderful place. We really hope that you'll uh, you'll come here, and um, uh, that I hope you enjoy this tour. Cassie, I'm sure, is is crushing it. She and I take group X classes, and uh, uh, those are exercise classes that are offered on campus. So maybe you'll come join us um, again. Welcome, and uh, I'll hopefully see you around soon. Okay, everybody, we thought we'd give you just a, a short tour of the, the 340 wing lab space that, uh, that folks in my lab work in. So this is one of the testing rooms. This is one of our all purpose rooms. We do a whole lot of stuff in here. Uh, um, you can see there's a giant freezer in there. A lot of times we'll do, um, we do dry blood spots and saliva sampling and other things here. So this, uh, uh, you can't see it, we have a sink in here. So that, that helps with some of the uh, some of the work that we do. And uh, so biological assays and specimens come through this room common. All right, let's go down the hallway. Okay, this is one of our, um, our call rooms. We do a lot of community randomized control trials where we offer stress management programs. And typically we have a, a, a study hotline where people are calling in and we are talking to people out in the community. This is a lot of times where that work's happening. And, You'll see there's some cushions there. We do these different meditation studies. So um, there's always meditation cushions in our lab. All right, we're moving here. Uh, this is uh, um, my project manager's room. We've got um, two of these. I've got three, three full-time staff um, uh, really running the show in my lab um, and uh, working on coordinating different projects. And so uh, they do get a window, don't tell anybody. All right, we're going down the hall. Um, this is one of our, our testing rooms. Um, it has uh, a lot of different physiological assessment equipment. It's kind of a flex room. It changes with every every study, so every couple months we're reconfiguring it, but it's a great way to work with community participants. All right, there's a classroom right there. And then right here, this is our other uh, lead project manager room. We've got um, folks that come in uh, that uh, research assistants that work side by side with our project managers. And yes, shh, there's a window. Uh, this is the uh, postdoc office um, and, uh, and special faculty office. Janine Dutcher is my um, lab director. She sort of tells everybody what to do. And she's got a, a beautiful setup there um, and sometimes shares uh, office space with other postdocs, but I don't see anybody in there right now. Probably been pretty quiet. In fact, uh, I'm imagining it's pretty dusty because I know Janine is off working virtually, as is everybody in my lab. And we've got a couple of other testing rooms, but I think that's a nice general tour to give you a sense for, uh, for our layout. This is our main lab room here. Um, we have uh, whole test banks of uh, computers with, with physiological recording equipment. And there's some holes that we punched in that wall. Uh, that allow us to use this adjacent room really as a, a really nice testing room. Um, we've got video equipment set up and a lot of times we'll do tree or social stress tests and we'll do laboratory stress challenges in here of various kinds and uh, it's got a separate door for people to go in and out of. So um, really nice setup. Thanks Cassie. Thanks. I uh, hope you enjoyed the, the, uh, the virtual tour and uh, I hope you come see it in person. So these are tonotopic maps from Lori Holt's lab, who studies auditory perception, but Bobby Klotsky is the one who actually helped me calculate the visual angle. So you can see that your perspective, based on where you're standing, changes. So a 
lot of our faculty also have a lot of overlap with electrical computer engineering and human computer interaction. So this is Bobby Klatsky. She was actually the first woman head of our psychology department. Pause. On the right is our EEG lab, and on the left is our department head suite. When you walk in, you'll be greeted by Ginger, Mike Tar's assistant. Ginger can help you with basically anything. A fun and useful experience graduate students can do is volunteer to host faculty candidates. So if you choose to do that, you work closely with Ginger and plenty out their schedules. On the left here is Kathy Majors, our business manager. She handles all of our monies, so if you're awarded external grants or have any questions about research finances, Kathy is your go-to. Ginger also always has bowls of candies on her desk and people pop by to grab a few pieces. Okay, on to Mike Tarr's office. Mike Tarr is our department head. I think a good word to describe Mike is progressive. He schedules meetings with the graduate students at least once a year to listen if we have any issues or concerns about the program. He adjusts our stipends for inflation and typically raises them and our annual travel funds each year and even allocated a few hundred dollars of annual discretionary funds for gradu each graduate student because he genuinely cares about our livelihoods. He's also open-minded for change. To give you an example, Robert Vargas and I proposed to Mike Tarr to start a diverse recruitment committee within the department to establish our presence at recruitment events for students from underrepresented minority and disadvantaged backgrounds. He completely supported this initiative and allocated funds for these efforts, which we hope will continue on with graduate students like you. Welcome to the EEG Lab. This EEG lab is special because it's communal, meaning if you come into the program and you want to use EEG, you can. We have at least 102 channel caps. And over here are where the experimenters or the researchers can run and program their experiments. And over here on the left is where our caps and the electrodes are hung. EEG is super cool because high temporal resolution, non-invasive, relatively inexpensive. And this is where the participant sits and it's your classic setup of the psychology experimenter able to watch as the participant is being tested. So you know the classic selective attention test where there's a bunch of basketball players and the basketball player is wearing white, you're counting how many times they're passing the ball to each other, but while this happens there's either a gorilla or bear who kind of just like chills in the middle, um, but you don't notice him because you are too busy counting the basketballs. Well. We replicated this and it didn't work. Probably because Bo Powers, who was one of David Plout's students, was a foot taller than all of us. Um, but this is just something fun that we did in Baker Hall and I had to share it with someone. <laughs> so this is actually an image from Tim Versteinen's laboratory of diffusion tensor imaging. I I think I painted it in my second year, but Tim actually teaches a data science course for all graduate students where you learn how to program in R. And I came to CMU with little to no programming background. And now as a fifth year almost graduating, I am a fluent programmer in both R and MATLAB. And um, I feel very confident in my statistic abilities, but it's primarily because of Tim's class. So um, if you're like me, where you start graduate school and your last statistics class was actually in your junior year in undergrad and you kind of forgot what a t-test or an ANOVA is, um, that shouldn't discourage you at all from um, you know, being in graduate school because our department will give you the resources and the instructors to help you learn that material.
Okay, we are heading over to Margaret Morrison from Baker Hall, and on the way there, we are stopping at the Number Garden, one of my favorite places on campus. So some of the big words that you hear are things like big data and machine learning and artificial intelligence. But when you leave CMU, you will know what those terms mean and you'll probably even use them in your research. CMU is a very tech heavy school and it's for a good reason. And now I present to you Margaret Morrison. The Children's School's primary role is to facilitate research in developmental psychology and any related fields. The Children's School has a whole wing of laboratories where faculty members conduct research. And our job is to have children available for that research, children ages three, four, and five. Our other job is to help improve the research by helping the faculty members, graduate students, and their research teams to better understand children and think about the best ways to get the data that they want in order to answer the research questions that they have. I have been working with the Children's School conducting research studies here for about 14 years. It allowed me to do some unique studies that otherwise I wouldn't be able to do. For example, to conduct longitudinal studies where we can follow the same child over a period of time and ask the same child many different questions in many different situations. Yeah. Okay, so that was the Children's School, which you can see is attached to the developmental labs. So this is where I do the majority of my research. As you can see, um, it is a Game Boy because I study the effects of video games on children's cognition. So some of the videos from the developmental labs look like they are straight out of the Blair Witch Project, which is because the developmental labs are recently renovated. Brand new furniture, brand new everything, but the power is also out due to said renovations. So I'm going to be showing you prior clips of research in the labs. Something that I want to highlight is how amazing Sharon Carver is. As you saw, Sharon Carver is the director of the Children's School, and she's also the Associate Dean for Academic Affairs and the director of the Graduate Fellowship Program I'm in, PEER. On top of that, she also teaches courses in the learning sciences, one of them being Educational Goals, Instruction, and Assessment. This class is one of the most beneficial classes that I have ever taken. It teaches you evidence-based principles of how students learn, down to designing an entire curriculum and a syllabus, so actual formal training on how to teach a class and the best methods to do so. Sharon is also an excellent role model and someone that you can go to and talk to about anything. She will genuinely have your best interests at heart and she will look out for you. I can't tell you the amount of times I've knocked on Sharon's office directly next to the developmental labs and she's dropped everything she's working on and opened her door for me. In the lab, there's also your classic double-sided mirrors and we also have eye tracking and a lot of access to technology. There are lab spaces for every single developmental faculty. So for Bonnie Nazari, Jessica Cantlin, Dan Yurovsky, David Rackison, Eric Thiessen, Anna Fisher, Everyone has their own lab space and they also typically also have a lab manager and a research team that helps collect data. So aside from the children's school, we also have several, several partnerships with schools in and around Pittsburgh where we actually go into the schools and actually collect data. David Rackison and Eric Thiessen also do work with infants, so a lot of the times you'll see infants and caregivers coming in and out of the lab because we have partnerships with families around the community as well. So something important to know about graduate school is that your advisor will most likely make or break your experience. So my advisor, Anna Fisher, I feel very grateful for because 
Not a goal developmental, but she does scaffold. So she doesn't hold my hand through things and she gives me the perfect amount of autonomy. She's also very supportive. Something that you learn in academia is that you need to develop a tough skin and be okay with rejections and experiments that don't go as planned because it does happen often and that is science. A tradition that we started in the lab is we celebrate not only acceptances and worked experiments, but also submissions and rejections. So rather than kind of moping around when something doesn't work and just celebrating acceptances we also celebrate rejections and attempted experiments just as much and it just shows that she helps me build resiliency and having a supportive environment is so important so something that developmental lab space has is functional near infrared spectroscopy also known as fnirs which uses low levels of light to actually image the brain and it's really nice for children and special populations because it's less sensitive to motion artifacts compared to EEG and children don't need to stay in a confined, loud environment and stay relatively immobile like fMRI. Like the EEG lab, FNIRS is also a communal space where researchers who are interested in using it do have access to it and it is a really nice tool that we have here in the developmental lab spaces. Something I wanna emphasize about the community is the undergraduate students. So the undergraduate students at Carnegie Mellon are some of the most talented and skilled students that I've ever worked with. My research would definitely not be possible without them. So I currently mentor a team of 15 undergraduate students ranging from human-computer interaction, computer science, psychology, computational neuroscience. Working with them is definitely my favorite part of the graduate student experience here. One of the biggest traditions at CMU is painting the fence, which has actually beaten the Guinness World Records for the most painted object in the world. But this is one of the ways that students express themselves here at the university. So these images were actually modeled off of work in Tim Versteinen's lab and also by Kevin Jarbo. So we're actually gonna go visit Kevin in the university center. Next to Margaret Morrison is the University Center. This is where a lot of students can hang out either outside or inside and do work. There's also a tennis courts, an indoor swimming pool, and a racquetball court. This is the University Center. So this is where students come as sort of a central hub. In the University Center, there is a Center for Student Diversity and Inclusion. Hey everyone, I'm Kevin Jarbo. Welcome to the center. Let's take a tour. Come on in. So, hey everyone, my name is Kevin Jarbo. I'm currently a President's Postdoctoral Fellow in the Department of Social and Decision Sciences, but I'm also a PhD psychology alum from the psych, uh, from the psych department here. I used to work with Tim Versteinen in the COVAX lab, and I'll be starting a faculty position here in fall 2021. So, looking forward to seeing y'all when you get here. Another thing that I do here on campus is I work part-time in the Center for Student Diversity and Inclusion. What we do is provide identity-based support for all students on campus so that they can navigate their life here from the student affairs perspective as well as the academic perspective. So as you look around the center, we have a lot of spaces where students can come and congregate to get some work done, just to hang out and rejuvenate from the stresses of daily campus life. But you're surrounded by a bunch of different professionals here in student affairs who are able to support you in any ways that you need. So there's a ton of places to work, a ton of places to connect, and a ton of places to find yourself here at CMU. So I'm looking forward to seeing you all down here in the center. So this is Kevin's office here in the center. Hey again, y'all. So this is where I work on a day-to-day -day basis when I'm here at the Center for Student Diversity and Inclusion. So students can have one-on-one -on -one meetings with me. Sometimes I just give up this space for them to come and hang out if they need it. Uh, but I also am stationed up in Porter Hall. So if you get to campus and want to see me up there, that's a good place to visit. 
So some of the research that I do involved at here at the university is helping to co-direct the data-driven diversity lab or the D3 lab with Dr. Cody Mankey, who's also in psychology. A lot of the work that we do there is based on studying stereotype threat as well as the student experiences here on campus to see if we can find ways to create new interventions that will help support students and their success here at the university. So one thing I really want to emphasize about what we do down here at the center is provide identity and support for all of our students on campus. So this includes students from historically underrepresented racial backgrounds, but also students who identify as LGBTQ+, or as our first generation students. A lot of what we do supports the student organizations who represent these different kinds of identities, but we also find ways to bring them together and support them through a lot of innovative programming and initiatives that support their academic life around campus as well. The University Center is huge, and there is a lot of space to do work and hang out. On the top floor of the UC, there is a graduate student lounge that is exclusively for graduate students. So if you remember before, earlier in this video, Krista is the GSA representative for the psychology department. The graduate student assembly is CMU's student body government and they advocate on behalf of the graduate students. So each department at CMU has reps from each of their departments. And something special that they do is they create spaces and they also plan events specifically for graduate students. So this graduate student lounge was designed and input by the graduate student assembly and it's really fun because during the World Cup or the Super Bowl, they're actually order food and put the game on so graduate students can come and watch together. So in the University Center, we also have fitness facilities. So there is a weight room on the bottom floor and there's cardio machines on the top floor. There's also group X classes. So we have studios upstairs that are free to all staff and students. We also have a brand new fitness facilities in Tepper School of Business, which we'll go to in a few minutes. And by a few minutes, I mean now. So the Tepper School of Business is relatively new. It is a beautiful building. And as I said, they have brand new fitness facilities and they also have studios here too. They are holding virtual remote fitness classes, but they are actually having them in person just with a limited capacity and all pandemic safety procedures in play. But Tepper School of Business is somewhere where the graduate students go often to do work or just hang out and it's a really nice place both inside and out and it is right across the street from the University Center, which is really nice. So if you want a change of scenery, here is the place that you can go when you're on campus. Okay, now for our last stop, let's head over to the Bridge Center. The Bridge Center is located in the Mellon Institute, which is a few blocks away from Baker. If you're taking any neuroscience classes, they'll most likely be in here. And if you do any fMRI work, this is also the building that you'll visit quite often. The Mellon Institute is relatively new bridge center and Robert is going to give you a tour of the facilities. Uh, hello everyone, let's go on in. Um, and so this is the Bridge Center. center. It's about... Um, it's entering its, its second year. It's a really new facility. Uh, so CMU originally had access to a scanner over um, at a building called Wing Hall. Uh, but that scanner is kind of um, aged out and we're sort of making a transition to the Bridge Center, which the Bridge Center is a, a joint facility um, between CMU and the University of Pittsburgh. Uh, and it's here in the, the Mellon Institute. Um, which is a building that's kind of about uh, five to ten minutes to walk away from, from uh, CMU. Um, and so let's do a tour. Cool. Um, so uh, moving 
onwards, uh, one facility uh, or one service that the scanner provides is uh, we have a mock scanner here. Um, it's currently under construction, as you can see. Um, but what this does is it allows you to essentially um, run uh, mock versions of your paradigm to your participants, um, particularly participants who haven't had a lot of experience participating in MRI studies or have had many MRIs. Um, because for those of you that have had one, um, uh, it's a little bit of an unnerving experience. And so in order to, to give an opportunity for the participants to become inoculated to uh, the noise, the feeling of being a little bit claustrophobic and a bore, um, we uh, can essentially run small mini versions of your experiment here. Uh, so let's move on. Entering the MRI suite, um, as you can see, we have a uh, really nice unisex bathroom uh, facilities. Uh, we have three practice rooms. Um, we can just look at an example of one real quick. As you can see here, they're generally empty rooms with computers um, where you can run behavioral uh, pre scan behavioral assessments or uh, post scan debriefings, um, pretty much whatever you want. Uh, there's plenty of space here. Here is the, the computer room and there is the scanner. Uh, so we have a 3P Prisma scanner. Um, we have capabilities with uh, 64 channel, 32 channel. We have a bird cage and um, I think a 12 channel head coil. Uh, and um, in addition to having the variety of, of, of these channel head coils, um, uh, the scanner can do pretty high resolution uh, imaging, like less than two millimeters. Um, in addition to that, we have eye tracking capabilities. Um, I know we can get uh, in-scanner vitals information, so things like respiratory measures and, and uh, uh, heart rate. Um, yeah, a number of labs here use uh, uh, various stimulus presentation software, so everything from uh, E-Prime to Psych Toolbox to uh, uh, using Python-based uh, uh, presentation software. Um, in addition to that, uh, a couple labs also use uh, BIDS formatting, so that infrastructure can be built into um, your data acquisition sequence. Um, we also have an amazing MRI tech. Yes. Hey, Scott. Scott is Scott is a hero. Um, and so if we want to take a peek inside the scanner, or Cassie, don't lose your phone. Hold on to it tight. Um, yeah, and uh, during the pandemic, uh, we have sanitized everything. The safety protocols are incredibly strict. Um, like I said, no one is here unless they belong here. Um, I think that just about covers it. Uh, it's a new facility. It's incredibly nice. Um, yeah, the, the, the directors and the people who help uh, coordinate, the technologists, um, you couldn't work with better people. And look how participant friendly this scanner is. Beautiful. Anything else you'd like to add, Scott? <laughs> I don't want to spot. <laughs> Robert touched on it, but this is basically the presentation side. Um, we also have uh, ways to do blood pressure, to do temperature, to do heart rate. Um, like Robert said, uh, multiple, multiple ways to respond with button gloves. We have an eye tracking system. Um, from yeah, and I guess new eye tracking system. And I guess on the, on the software end, um, I'm not sure if this has been implemented yet, but I know there's uh, a coordinated effort to create kind of like a centralized GitHub repository for various labs to kind of share their, their um, uh, aspects of their pipeline, whether it be uh, image processing or, or kind of data formatting. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's a modern state-of-the-art facility, and uh, yeah, it's great to work here. Thank you, Scott, so much. Welcome. Thanks, Robert.
So right next to Baker Hall is actually Flagstaff Hill. So our campus is right next to this beautiful park where you can have picnics and hang out, throw a frisbee, just soak in the sun. Right over there is actually Phipps Conservatory where they conduct research. So if you're wondering what the graduate students have been doing outside of research, in the pandemic, we have socially distanced lunches, virtual happy hours, game night. We love Jackbox games and Among Us. We also hang out in our virtual graduate wing. Look how cute we are sitting by the fire. We really hope you enjoyed this tour and we hope you can join our community and be here at Carnegie Mellon. Welcome to the developmental lab space. Uh, patience. patience. You need to unmute yourself. Um, they're doing some renovations. So maybe we're gonna film this like film little haunted house style. It's gonna be in the dark. Found that is exclusively for graduate students. What? Oh yeah, we're pretty cool and we might be the coolest cohort. You know, don't tell anyone that's on the DL, but if you come here, Maybe you can be part of the next coolest cohort. Oh, yes. What is that, Scott? Uh, this is how we clean and sanitize everything with COVID. It's basically a Clorox gun. Yep, smells like bleach. Yeah. <laughs>